Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 There's a blessing to be before you uh, this afternoon. Um, I remember as a Boy Scout, uh, we had to learn, uh, always be prepared. Amen. At a moment's notice. And uh, so uh, I'm glad I was prepared <laughs> uh, this afternoon. Um, I won't keep you too long this afternoon um, because uh, it was stated a long time ago that heat plus eat equals sleep. So I will not keep you uh, that long uh, this afternoon. But let us open up uh, to Matthew chapter 25, uh, right into the uh, scripture reading at uh, verse 14. And of course, this is a familiar passage um, to many of us. We're at the beginning of the parable of the talents. Um, but uh, interesting, uh, there are times we focus on one or two items in it, but not necessarily uh, just some things that surround and some things that we pull from it. So this afternoon, we're just going to pull just a few things, just about four or five points from this parable. So if you have it, the scripture reads, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who is called, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several or individual ability, and straightway took his journey. Uh, if I was to uh, have a title to this, I would call this Godly Ability. And uh, the, the reason I, we, uh, we say uh, Godly Ability is because there's, it's interesting when we look at the scripture that we focus on the talents, and we focus on uh, what those talents had. But today we're going to pull out some things just to uh, understand some points we understand uh, already and some points that we may have overlooked in the past or might need some uh, revisiting, if you will. So uh, the first point I'd like to draw, it actually uh, the main focus is right in verse 15. Um, the scripture, of course, we know that uh, the, the master gave one talent, two talents, five talents. And, uh, of course, uh, the other two servants, one with five, the one with two, they doubled it. They increased the amount that they had. Um, but the one that had one talent didn't do a thing with it. He just buried it. And it's imperative for us to understand uh, one common thing in this, in this particular scripture is that the master gave each one according to his individual ability, meaning he knew what they were capable of already. He didn't bless them with, uh, with an ability, or, or rather we understand that this parable is talking about us, that we're not blessed with abilities haphazardly, that we're blessed with abilities understanding what it is that we need to do. Um, the scripture, um, another scripture, first, I will first, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, and we know that that scripture says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And when you get into the original text, and I believe this is something Brother Robertson actually spoke on last week, the word strengthens, when you get into the, the, the real root of the word, the word means uh, ability, given ability. Um, a good scripture that it's referenced with is the scripture where Jesus is speaking, and he says in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, and he that abides in me and I in him the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So going back to Matthew 25, that scripture in verse 15 is simply saying that whatever ability or talent that we do have, not only was it just given to us, not only is it something that we're just strong in, but it's something that the Lord has blessed us to be able to do, to be able to perform. Uh, the next point, of course, this is kind of a common point, uh, going right into verse 15, still in verse 15, is that each one of us has a different ability. Um, there are those of us even today where it may be one ability or two abilities or five abilities or a dozen abilities. It's funny, uh, Gerald and I were talking, Brother uh, Blackwell and I were talking, and we said, well, Gerald, what is it that you haven't done? And he said, I haven't counted the money. Uh, <laughs> But it's amazing just the, the things that the Lord allows us to do, that we're gifted in various aspects. But I think that the next point that we need to pull out is kind of an understanding of each talent. Now, the scripture uh, in uh, Matthew with talents, we're talking about a currency in the time. 
if one talent uh, would be equivalent to about $384,000 today. So when we speak talent, in Luke, the same parables there, the word talent is not used. So we're talking about just a form of currency. Um, it's interesting that that word talent is there. We use the word talent a bit differently today. But it's interesting to note that when he gave these talents, if, uh, if you walk with me for a moment, he gave these talents, the one talent was worth $384,000. Now, I don't like to use money as, a, as, as an example, but I think it kind of fits here because he didn't give him a small amount. He gave him one talent, but he didn't give him a small amount, which means that when we get these talents, there's an abundance that's with them, if you uh, take my meaning, that when we get them, there's a reason that um, uh, as we have them, as we use them, we, that, or as we get them, as we're blessed with them, that we're able to use them so well. It could be that an individual's gift is just one thing, but just how abundant that person can be in just that one thing. And I think that the most important point to pull out of the scripture actually goes to verse 27 in Matthew 25. Uh, where the scripture says, as he's talking to the servant who had one talent that buried it, he says, Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers or the bankers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with interest. The biggest thing about our abilities is that they're not given to be idle. There's an expectancy that the Lord has, that if we are given an ability, it makes no sense for uh, just using singing, because I guess it's relevant, for an individual to remain silent, knowing that the Lord has blessed this individual with that ability, and that ability can span so far. Does that make sense? It's, 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 it's foul, in fact, for us to have a gift from the Lord and not to do anything with it. But I think that it's imperative for us to understand because right now, church, we're in a growth phase. Uh, this congregation is growing. The congregations in the city of Philadelphia are growing and growing together. That we really are seeking to claim this city for the Lord. That these gifts, as we see that uh, the, the, the one who, rece who received two, he gained another two. The one who received five, he gained, gained another five. It's interesting that when the Lord says to him in verse 27, you should have put my money in the bank so I could have had interest, no matter what, there's work involved. That, this, that the Lord didn't say, okay, your gift will increase just by doing nothing with it. It's imperative for us to do the things that would increase our gifts. So think about it for a moment. How is it that we uh, uh, increase our gifts? By using them. An individual can't grow in speaking if an individual hasn't spoken in front of anybody or has spoken one time. It makes no sense for an individual to try and grow, if you will, or <clears throat> to try and grow in the ability of singing if they don't practice singing. Now, here is something that I like to point to. You can't grow in the Word if you're only reading it on Sunday morning. You can't grow in the word if you're just glancing at it when there's just an issue. You can't grow in the word if you're not in this thing daily. It, it, it amazes me sometimes because I, I say uh, to myself that uh, it's interesting that in this day and age, we have so many individuals that uh, seek to want to grow spiritually. Uh, so many statements have been said to me. I'll share a few um, that have been shared to me just over the course of maybe the past five years that I... Uh, statements like, I wish we had a more spiritual song service. I wish we, uh, you, you know, had a more uh, spiritual understanding. And I say, you know, the, the first thing that really when you get into the parable of the talents that we need to have is a spirit of excellence. If we don't have a standard of excellence to be here, to study the word, to actually get into the word, song service can't grow spiritually if you're just in the song book. You need to be in the Bible as well. That your life can't grow, uh, just multiply, just, just the word I'm looking for. Exponentially. That's it. We can't grow exponentially 
if we don't grow in the word. So there is a constant discipline, a spirit of excellence, if you will, that we need to have in order to grow ourselves in the Bible today. And I just, I just personally, I have, um, I just believe that, and, and if I get the opportunity again to speak again, <clears throat> the sermon that I'm actually preparing is actually dealing with the spirit of excellence. That when God uh, uh, came to Cain, he didn't say he wanted, you know, just whatever was left over. He wanted the first fruits. And the first fruits didn't necessarily mean the first growth. It meant the best of the best. Of, 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 so why is it that we could give our jobs the best of the best? Why is it that we can give uh, our friends and family the best of the best? I, I, it, was a, it was a joke that was said at the men's retreat in Kent, Connecticut. Um, I was talking with uh, Earl Washington and Andre Hart. And he said, it's amazing. We don't set aside time to make sure that we go to things that will increase our spirituality, like a men's retreat or a singles event or a lectureship. But we will plan a trip for Cancun in a heartbeat. We will plan a trip for South Beach, Miami, in a heartbeat. But it, it, it goes to say something, what's, what's, what's wrong? What is it that we need to change? Well, of course, the scripture says if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So the same, the same thing is, is understood here. And I love this, this particular passage of scripture because it is the foundation, if you will, of excellence where the Lord, in, in just sharing this parable, says so many things that sometimes we kind of uh, glaze over. And so I just wanted to share this for you. And as I stated, I, I wouldn't be long this morning uh, or this afternoon. That's how long it is, because <laughs> this afternoon. So I, I'm just glad to, to have shared this uh, portion of the word with you, and I hope to be here again to share again with you. So as our, as our song leader comes forth, there may be those among you who are not saved, who are not a member of the Lord's flock. Um, and with that, we just say th there are certain steps that the scripture requires. That first we need to hear the word, understand it, believe it, repent of our sins, confess Christ, the Son of God, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. Um, if you today are standing in need of prayer, we ask that as uh, the song leader comes forth and we sing our song of encouragement, that you stand, that make your request known, and we will pray with you and for you. Uh, let us together stand for the song of invitation. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me.